Hello everybody, it's Marius Furi, I'm from Greenbrow Consulting and today I want to discuss how you install a three-phase system using three of eight kilowatt single-phase inverters uh, to make up a three-phase system. In terms of the scope, what we're going to cover is um, I will assume that you're proficient with single inverter systems so I'm not going to talk about the basics of installing that. Um, so what I will be discussing is the three elements that you need to understand. The first one is the DC power flow, in other words, the battery power flow. Then the system communication um, and then the AC power flow. Uh, just a note before we start, uh, people often talk about uh, master and slave inverters. Now they refer to phase masters and phase slaves in that case. But there is a plant master or a system master, whatever they call it. Um, uh, SunSync is very shy in documentation as far as that is concerned. And essentially it is the phase master of phase one or phase A, uh, which also becomes the plant master. So just bear that in mind. It's the same inverter, it's just got the additional function of being the plant master. So let's look at the DC power flow. So what you want to do is you want to take battery one, battery two, battery three. In this case, I'm talking about a three battery system. In the specific example I'll be using with the images and that is three times 300 amp hour SunSync batteries. Um, or they, I think in terms of kilowatt they or kilowatt hour, they are about just under 16 kilowatt hours. So this totally, total battery bank will be like between 47 and 48 kilowatt hours. So how you connect it from a power flow point of view, you connect the battery uh, to a negative bus bar, the negative terminal of the battery. You'll see that just now. Uh, the second battery do the same and the third battery do the same. In my case, I just use a small copper bus bar, 30 millimeter by 5 millimeter and I don't actually ever switch off the negative. I only switch the positive off a battery back. On the positive side, I use a DC MCCB. Uh, in this case, it's an Onesto one. And the, one of the nice things that it has is that you can put links at the top there, which they supply with the MCCB. And then you have essentially the positive battery uh, bank terminal becomes those links and you'll you'll see well no I don't have a photo of them but yeah that's it and then essentially you've got a negative and a positive so that is your battery bank and you connect the negative uh, to inverter one two and three and you connect the positives to inverter one two and three uh, in terms of cable length that that and that has to be the same length uh, then that, that and that has to be the same length. Positive and negative does not have to be the same length. And on the uh, inverter side of the common bus bars, you have the same three negatives and three positive. Three negatives must be the same length and the three positives must be the same length. So that's your DC power flow. If you talk about the communication, then what you do is you just have to link your um, three inverters together. If we look at this photo, you'll see there at the back, if you look nicely, if you look into the inverter, you'll see there's a, a CAN bus connector. This is the CAN bus connector. Uh, in this case, it's a CAN B connector. It's not written there. It only says CAN bus, and I'll talk about CAN B and A, and then you can understand it. And then at the bottom, there's a parallel A and a parallel B connector, which is available for linking the inverters together. So what you do is you take parallel connector B of the first inverter, in other words, the plant master, which also doubles up as the phase one master. So you go to parallel connector B on that, you connect a CAT6 cable, or CAT 6A I use nowadays, and you connect it to parallel connector A of the second inverter. Okay, so you link them like that, and then on parallel B of the second inverter, 
you connect to parallel A, parallel A of the third inverter, and then the inverters talk to each other. Right. Uh, the battery, I'll talk a bit further just now, how you connect the batteries together. And then, of course, there's the CAN bus uh, from the inverters that's got to go to the CAN bus on the batteries. And we'll talk a bit further just now about that as well. Right. Um, <clears throat> the SunSync inverter itself is has got a can b interface now can b interface looks like this uh, two is the ground and then four is can high and uh, five is can low and on the battery side you've got a can a interface where you've again got the ground now moves instead of two it moves to six and then your can high and can low remains uh, four and five um, the reason why they generally use um, can type A on the on the batteries is because they reserve those three for RS-485 communication. And on the inverter they don't, so that's a CAN bus B interface and that's a CAN bus A interface. Otherwise, if you're not interested, this is the picture of the cable. The cable's got to look like that. Let's look at the batteries. Okay, the first thing is the battery at the top of this little plate here that I took off, there is a breaker in the batteries, but because I'm using the MCCB to switch it off and on, and the reason for that is there's a plate over it. So if you've got an emergency, you don't want to start loosening plates using these rubbish little screws. So this is only a switch that you switch off if you want to permanently disengage a battery for whatever reason. Um, otherwise, you keep that on. Then there's the terminals, the positive and the negative terminal of the battery, which you connect the, the power from or power to, whatever you want to call it. And then there's that little panel there that I expanded here. You switch the power on there, which is essentially your BMS probably that you switch on. And then in front, there's a little silver button that you keep in for three seconds and then the battery activates. So there's the CAN bus there, right? And then there's the link in and the link out. And what you do if you connect the batteries together, let's go back back there, is you connect the CAN bus that comes from the inverter, the cable you connect into, into that. That's a special cable that you made up with this connection, okay? So CAN bus goes in there and then link out from the uh, master battery goes to link in of the first slave battery and link out of the first slave battery goes to link in of the second slave battery. And that is simply, that's, these are straight through um, links that you just buy patch, uh, patch cords or whatever RS um, CAT6 uh, patch cables that you use for that. Right, so that link out, link in, you know, you get, you, like I said, you go from out to in and out to in, and you've connected your three batteries together. So that's how you connect the batteries together. Right, so let's just summarize quickly. So now you've got your links, your batteries are talking to each other. You've got this cable to connect your inverter to your battery and you've got these CAT6 cables which connects your um, your inverters together. So now everything talks to each other and right, let's go there. Uh, if you want to install a system, make sure you've got a, a phase rotation meter. Uh, you're just going to make life difficult for yourself and you're going to be in the dark and there's certain errors you won't understand. So get a phase rotation meter and make sure that everything on the site is clockwise. Always say don't fix one mistake with another one. So don't, um, so don't take an a anti-clockwise or a counterclockwise uh, connection and then turn you know two phases around so that it's clockwise and things like that make sure the whole site is correct and that everything the phase rotation is clockwise okay um 
install only three phase breakers around the inverters this is so that you don't switch on one phase and then the other one is not on yet the inverters really don't like it so make sure that the the breakout to the inverters and the power coming back from the inverters where it feeds the loads that those are three phase switches um, and after you've corrected and you're sure that you have a clockwise AC system, then switch off the AC. In other words, switch off that breakout switch that goes to the inverters, as well as the load coming from the inverters. And from there, you do your whole setup using only DC battery power. And then once that works and all these little normal LEDs on the inverters are are, are uh, on then you know the whole system works and then you can apply AC to it now each inverter has to has a, have its own dongle I think you're probably aware of that um, so then you register the plant master, master in other words your phase one inverter you connect to the Sunsync connect on the internet and once you've got that <clears throat> you go and you list all your plants you select that plant and on the right hand side there's those three little dots you click on that and then it says you can add gateways and then the dongle of the second and third inverter those two gateways you add that to the plant you'll see how it works when you go onto the site in setting it up <clears throat> what you simply do is on the first inverter you say okay the system is parallel it's a phase master the modbus serial number of phase A is 1. In Modbus you start counting at 1. Um, so you, you set that up and that is phase A. You say OK. On the second inverter you go parallel master Modbus serial number 2. Each Modbus serial number address should be different. So it's 1, 2, 3 and that is phase A, B, C parallel master and then the rest is correct. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's what you need to know. Okay, so good luck with this and um, I wish you good luck in setting up your system. So as I said, it's Maurice Free from Greenbrow Consulting and um, yeah, if you have a problem, give me a call and then we can chat about it.